What's up, guys? So it's your boy here, The Purposeful Trader with The Purposeful Trading Academy. And I'm super excited to come to you guys today and uh, teach and also uh, reassure myself on <laughs> taking really good trades. Um, so, yeah, I'm talking baseball terms a little bit, taking a double. <laughs> I had a double hitter, guys, and I didn't take it and see what it cost me later on in the video so let's just go into it straight into it clbs beautiful 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 potential trade beautiful purposeful trade i saw it as one of those home run type trades which is not a problem when you actually you know measure everything up the correct way when i'm looking at this chart first thing i'm thinking about is i look at the percent gain then i say okay what is the market cap and what is the float rotation? How, what is the share float? Because that allows me to see, you know, how small is that float? Because if the float is small, that means the volume can manipulate uh, easier. It can manipulate easier the, the price action. So if you have a small float of shares, so that means if, let's say you have one million share float, right in that case it only takes 1 million shares of volume to actually uh, trade that stock i mean for that stock to actually be able to run 100 percent and that just clearly means there's more chance of upside because if we know 90 to 92 percent of people are buyers they're not short sellers so only about eight to ten percent, eight to ten percent of people are short sellers, which are people who bet against the stocks. So if you find a low float that's up on really good news, um, or is even just up, really you want the good news. Uh, you really want the great news. So up on good news, low float has some support shown in the pre market. So you have some to risk off of. It's a no-brainer trade, especially if there's not enough overhead resistance over top, which we'll also cover today. So I decided to get long in this stock for two reasons. There was multiple levels of floored resistance, which is, you know, the ground level of resistance. The first time we see a resistance, right? And then we know the ceiling floor is when there is a second or a second layer of resistance that's past, you know, a previous breakout level. So there's no breakout level here. The breakout level is up in here. This range, right? Once here. That's that's a breakout level, which also is a ceiling floor over here. So when I got long, I got long around right in here in the 395 area. I could have got to execute a little bit. Earlier, didn't, but I saw it as, as it still as a good trade potentially and got long. As you can see, it pulled back here right into this. Now you can see that this is beautiful because now it's sitting on top or sitting right into that ceiling floor. Now it's a ceiling floor because it's not underneath the level of resistance, it's actually over top of it. And it sat right into it perfectly, right around this 370 ish level. And I said, we can have some fun this morning. And uh, from there, pushed really strongly uh, right near, if you look left, all the way left. Now you can see this is a ceiling. This is a ceiling. It could not break this level earlier, the level of the 448 level. So it was here. Pull back just like I thought. I mean, this is crystal. This is a crystal, crystal, crystal trade. Uh, very beautiful potential. It pulls. I'm not looking at that. Like I always say, the floor that you may stand on may have some impurities, but a floor is still a floor, which means it's still going to stay upright, right? For the most part, as long as it's staying upright and you're not going all the way through the ceiling, like busting through, then it's 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 a continual uptrend looking to happen and so right there we break through the ceiling and we push the new highs now one thing i was looking at i was looking forward to 
when it pulled back here, I was fine with it consolidating here in the 459s, 450s, the low of 440s maybe. But 450s, I wanted to consolidate holes, you know, right in this area, high 450s. And I wanted to turn, turn, and push. Well, which is a really good um, avenue if there's no level of resistance over top or it's not showing that strength of uh, sellers over the top, right? So if you don't have any motivated sellers, it's a beautiful trade. And so I'm thinking, you know, there's no motivated sellers here. Beautiful, beautiful. And But I didn't look at, at multiple charts this time. I was, uh, I was looking at multiple charts, but I didn't see the resistance for some reason, some odd reason. Now, if we look back two years ago, perfect there's a perfect resistance here at five i know you can barely see it but if i do the five year chart maybe you'll see it a lot better because these are the things that can make and or break a trade right break, make or break a trading plan and so this is why so many people think trading is actually harder than what it is it's a lot more planning than actual trading um Yes, it's a lot more planning than actual pressing buttons. That's what I should say, because trading is the process of a whole trade in which you find a trade that you would like to partake in. Then you execute that trade and you execute that trading plan. So the planning is part of the actual trade, not just the buttons. It's actually the most important part. The buttons are the last thing that should come. Um, as you can see here, there is a level of resistance here at that five level. And, I mean, smacked, smacked, smacked it, smacked it. And, I mean, it didn't even touch five. It touched that resistance <laughs> and it pulled back right into this lower. You can see it. It pulled right back into, just look at the line. I'm going to try to draw a line for you guys. Just look at this line, if it wants to act right. There we go. Here we go. Look at this line over top. Oh, wait a minute. That's a little bit too high. But this, this is also still a line. So I was actually looking for a trade that would reach this 650s level. You know, this 6s, 6 or 6 ish level and this is what i was looking for and the reason why is i mean because that's the top but also i gotta see right in here there's also a bottom there's also a bottom right really it starts here in this four four ish level but it broke through that four level and after it broke that four level there's another layer of resistance here in the fives so it makes it even more difficult to be successful on a breakout, no matter how great your share count is or how low it is. You know, it's all depending on the chart pattern. I mean, it was, it was a beautiful single trade, but I didn't see these things. You see multiple layers of resistance, which means you have potential bag holders, potential bag holders. And if you have potential bag holders, which simply means that there are people over the top who are holding a bag of money or holding a bag of shares in a stock, and they've been waiting for it to come back to a certain level so they can even, even break even. And so once it gets close enough, you have these people selling their shares, selling their shares, and they may even have alerts to where they just see, oh, snap, this is up right around where I bought it years ago. And now they get to sell those shares for basically break even. And now you should be sharing in that same selling mentality right around the areas of resistance, you know, which is my weakness of today. I did not sell it into that resistance level. And I've been doing really, really well at that the past couple of weeks as I've been going long. So it's been something that's special that we have to see. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, intraday, intraday type chart so we can see my thought process again. But, guys, it really makes sense 
for us to actually see the limits of a stock so we can know where to get in and where to get out. You know, I'm going to just go from right here and we're going to be finished with this um, recap because it was, I mean, it was a really good trade. You know, I got a 392 average, 390s average, whatever it was, 395, doesn't matter, in the 390s. And I was looking to get out in the, you know, high fives to the sixes. And I did not see that range. So when I saw this, I was looking at it like, hey, this could keep going. Instead of saying, you know what, this could be topping out because that five resistance level over the top. And um, I didn't take that into account or I would have just took it. To be honest, if you count, you know, 5,000 shares with a 390 average or 395 average, and you sell those shares at 463, you tell me what you get. You tell me what you get. You can make more money just making those single trades um, and, and actually just looking a lot better into the resistance levels when you're looking to exit. Just take the trade into the into the volume push, which you see here. That was a huge volume push. Breakout over the 448 area. And what if I just sell right here? As soon as it breaks out, it's 465, in and out. No, it's not dead top, but it's close enough to the top. Instead of having to sell when it starts to break down here. You know, um, I know most people, when they see this, they started selling maybe in here because they said, oh, snap, this is cracked the 450 levels. You know, this 460 nucleus, right, or the ceiling floor which is where, you know, it broke out earlier and now it's retesting that level. As soon as it breaks and cracks through that 442 level, now guess what? And it goes all the way back down. It cracked all the way back down to the low fours right here at the low four or six, and then it bounces. So now on this bounce, unless it really pushes and overtakes the amount of sellers there, you're going to see so much more red candles which means people are selling it now. They're selling this off. And as you see it selling off, you can see a clear difference in how many red candles it is on this side of the chart and how many green candles there are on this side of the chart, right? So compared to the amount of red candles over here, there's not that many over here because guess what? This is the beginning of a trade. Right, this is the first leg, and when, you know, in track there are four legs on a four by one, and this is the first, the first leg, and the second leg going to, I mean, the market. So once you're going into the market, you see, okay, it's green, it's going green, it's staying green, it's staying with the trend. But the moment you see the 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 hands change over, right. And there's not necessarily four places here, um, but the moment you see a handover when you trade, I mean, when, when you're trading here and you see that green start to go red, not because it's consolidating, but because it breaks the consolidation, breaks that ceiling floor, I like to say, and then starts to ramp back up a little bit. That's purely people selling and you have dip buyers here. But once it gets to this point, if it doesn't start to overtake here, Nine times out of ten, this is a great chance to start shorting because one, there's a ceiling here. Two, it's shown that it wants to go down and is weak. And three, you have multi mo multiple motivated sellers. When you have multiple motivated sellers, you see some of the most egregious pullbacks in the stock market. And that's simply because that egregious pullback is due to the fact of so many people who have bought this thinking it was going to break the five level all in here and now they're underwater and you have people who were buying it over here let's say they were buying it all in here in the 420s all of it they were just underwater near four all these people are underwater about over 20 percent so now when they get a, a small bounce they want to get out as close as the break even as possible and so now when you see this 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 pool, this when this four took out, when this took out, it was over. This was it. This is all she wrote. The moment this got taken out, it was over. And it tried to reclaim four. Was not able to reclaim four. This was the final 
uh, sploosh, splash. If you were long this, you could say, you know what? Let's see if the forwards hold. Now, if you had that's if you had a lower average. Think about it. if you're down twenty percent on ten thousand dollars. How much money is that? That's two grand. So you're trying to get out now as close to break even as possible. You're not trying to lose any more money. So making a decision to do something like this is easy. It's easy to get out on this bounce because guess what? You know that this has a floor, uh, a floor back here in the 330s like we saw previously. And when you see that, then you understand, you know, hey, 330s, threes, you see it. You say, okay, this can possibly go back to the low threes. And this is a, you know, I got a high to mid four average. I got to get out of here. So you, you, as soon as it tests four again, you're out. And that's what makes a motivated seller. And the moment you see motivated sellers as a uh, short seller, you should follow the trend, follow the wave, because motivated sellers are what make the trades go down. It's not, oh, this, this stock is garbage. It may be garbage in the financial world, but when it comes down to the float, the share float, the share count, the shares traded, the volume traded, it doesn't matter. It's only a matter of fact of how much are people making in this trade? How much is it staying strong? How much is the volume? How much is the share count? And uh, if the if the stock can, can keep going, a stock can always keep going if there's not enough uh, resistance. But in this case, there was a strong, long layer of resistance that it has to creep and push through. So it, it hadn't done that. And uh, you saw it didn't want to go up. And now you see it bouncing and retesting. And now all these are just popcorn buyers here. Because guess what? What I mean by pop is you do it for one second, and then you come right back down to earth. Right? When you pop or when you jump, you jump up, but then you come right back down. And that's what this stock is doing. It's had a huge or egregious pullback. And it had a bounce near this level of the 380s right where it cracked that again and it just showed that it wanted to go down and that is something we can always look at following through so uh most of my trades have been solid this year um i've been up over 50 percent in a small account challenge that i'm doing so i do want to see how that works continuously every day for the rest of the year, we're going to do 10 trades. At, at every 10 trades, we're going to um, reclaim and we're going to talk about and talk about the amount of money that we've made in the account um, up until then, including the losses. So whatever the net profits are after every 10 trades, we'll be talking about we're going to be doing a 100 trade challenge. So 10 by 10 and every single week. We're going to be catching it up and we're going to do that for 52 weeks and we're going to see where we are in 52 weeks because we don't need $52,000 to start trading, right? We just need a lot of knowledge and we need needle capital, which means you can feel it when it pokes you. You know, if the, you should let the market, the market should feel you. If you make a 20% trade, you should make, you know, 40 or more you should make forty dollars or more you should make around a hundred uh dollars if you're betting a five hundred dollar trade so i want you guys to be simple but sure of yourselves make sure that you're focused on seeing the signs that can elevate your trading or make your trading a lot more simpler that's what we do here at purposeful trading academy and I'm so glad you guys came in today. And that is my analysis on CLBS. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Be blessed. That was fly. That was fly. That was fly. That was fly. I ain't gonna lie.